So I've been getting a lot of questions and concerns and actually, you know, myself included in this, wondering what to do in a bear market. What I'm doing today is bringing in some industry experts who have been through a couple cycles already to let you guys know the best way to navigate through this these bearish times, how to protect your portfolio and potentially even profit during the worst of times. And for those of you guys who are just getting into crypto and experiencing your first ever huge correction, they're gonna give you some of the strategies on how you can take advantage of these times. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so on the panel today, we've got John and Calvin, both from Metavest Capital, which we work with closely. And then here on my right, Ian, you guys may or may not have seen him. He is also working with me and us. You might be wondering why we're all together in a room here in Dubai. Well, that's because we're working on a secret project together. But more importantly, for the purpose of today's video, I bring you these three gentlemen to tell you what they know about surviving a bear market. So let's start with John. John, tell us about this market, where you think that we're at, what you've learned from maybe the last one, and kind of where we're headed in the immediate short term. Yeah, Carl, thanks for having us on your channel. I would say the keys to surviving a bear market are patience, patience, and then more patience. Dollar cost average, do not try and pick a bottom. I know guys that have been saying, buy Bitcoin at 54K, buy at 45K. And now they're, you know, sort of in a position where they're going, where do we sell? You know, we need to get out of this, it's a scam. It's not a scam, it's not going anywhere. This is the time to be buying. We might not be at the bottom yet, but we might be. So just dollar cost average and don't get hurt. Yeah, it's good good advice. I mean, that patience <clears throat> was something that was highlighted there. And if you guys are subscribed to my Alpha channel, you would see that I haven't made a video in about two weeks. One, because I've been busy and here and doing Metacon, things like that, but also just because I've been patient. Like literally I haven't deployed from my stablecoin reserves in two weeks or more, um, except for that one tweet I made the other day where I did buy a little bit of Colt and some ShopX. But uh, make sure that you're following me on Twitter too, just make sure that if I do have something small to update you guys on that trading challenge that you guys do get to see what I do without having to go and make a whole video. Anyway, patience is key. Dollar cost averaging we talk about a lot. Calvin, what about you, man? What are you, what are you doing for survival? Yeah, basically just following what John said in the immediate short term, just being patient. To be accumulating Bitcoin and Ethereum right now is probably the strongest play at the moment. I don't think going into altcoins in the immediate short term is going to be viable with all the volatility that we're experiencing. I and mean, over and above that, I guess, also bear markets are quite good for just finding a balance in other things in your life. You know, the, the bull markets kind of consume us and take up a lot of our time. So bear markets, good time to keep your mental health straight and kind of focus on, on all other aspects of your life as well. A good advice too, actually. You know, bear markets are times that we don't necessarily need to be so engaged in the market. If you're a short-term trader or investing, you know, trying to find fundamental projects that are good to invest in, do do that stuff too. But you know, also take the time because in bull markets, crazy busy and you don't really have time to do anything. And so it's a great point, Calvin. Thanks for bringing it up. So guys, if you don't know, Ian, he's been working with us for a while now. Uh, initially bought him in to uh, to manage our NFT portfolio. But one of the things I've been noticing about Ian is he manages to, um, I think. I don't know if it's fair to call you the king of shorts, um, but uh, but Ian shorts the hell out of things, which is which means he should theoretically be up a lot in a bull market. The trend is your friend, and while we're in a bearish market, you know maybe shorting is a good way if you can find good shorts. I mean, we've talked about this recently with our LP fund. How do we hedge risk of the, some of the investments that we've made? You know, like buying into some of these layer ones that have now seen a correction of you know, 50, 60%, we've talked about hedging strategy, you know, or shorting strategy. So yeah, you did call Stepin and Luna uh, before they actually saw this tremendous uh, correction. You know, how do you identify the projects that you are going to short? A lot of the time I'm following crypto and Twitter influencers that I've just kind of harvested over the years. Um, so I'm curious, like who are the Twitter influencers that you've been following that give this kind of alpha? Yeah, one I've, I've really, really been enjoying his content lately is uh, Rx Hems. Uh, he, it seems to be an analyst, he, even just this weekend, he just put a post up that he's going to be running a substack. He's analyzed about 196 token economies, so he's going to be writing a whole documentary around that. He uh, called waves. He explains the reasons why he's going that way. You know, like, like crypto as a macro trader and long-term investment thesis, he's got some very, very good views on the market. And, and you just see that they, they do make good decisions and you don't act on them straight away. You can just watch and you learn, you research and if they fit your cognitive bias on where you want to go and how you feel about the market, then you, you just follow you just follow the you follow your gut. 
Okay, so we'll, we'll put the links in the description below, guys. And of course, what Ian's saying or what any of us are saying aren't financial advice, just kind of telling you what, what we've been doing, our own strategies as well. All right, guys, curious now, like what did you learn from the top of the market back in 2017, 18, during the crash that lasted forever? And how are you applying that to the market today? I made some big mistakes late 2017 where, you know, I was buying into too much hype. One of the biggest lessons that I learned, I try and understand a fully diluted market cap. And so I'll go into coin market cap or coin gecko and I'll look at projects and I'll see fully diluted market cap 16 billion dollars and I'll go compare it to other projects that are two billion dollars and I'll realize they might not be completely overvalued but their room for growth for doing a 5 10 x is very very unlikely so back in the day I wasn't looking at fully diluted market caps I was buying tokens at ten dollars two three months later I found myself selling them at 20 cents 30 cents understanding the valuation of these companies and not buying into hype. Essentially, that's kind of what I talk to you guys about a lot as well as understanding what kind of emissions or inflation that we have looking for in the next three, six, 12 months. There is one thing I will add to that too. If you have a project that launches with a really high fully diluted valuation, however, there's no immediate unlocks that are happening for the next 12 months, you might have some room, even if it's severely overvalued on the fully diluted valuation, we might not have any severe inflation coming in the short term. So we might still have some room for some growth, but you have to be aware of of the token economic models when we can expect to see unlocks from things like the team, marketing buckets, private investors, uh, these kind of things, even to any type of bucket that might unlock, which will cause inflation. And you have to remember, in order for the price to sustain, there must be as much, at least as much demand incoming new buyers of that token that want to use that thing as there is people selling just to maintain the price. So if we can expect to see a 30% inflation in a year, that means we need at least 30% new users to come on board just to maintain price. And in Web3, we don't really see that yet. We don't really have that massive adoption coming yet from most protocols. I would just like to add one thing to that. There's another trick in the market, especially in a, in a bear market where you can take advantage. You can go look at tokenomics of a really good project. If there's a good cap table, you can go look what did the VCs pay a year ago, or eight months ago, and you can sometimes find that you can buy them on the open market right now for cheaper than what VCs paid eight months ago. Make a short list of projects that you really like, put them in a, you know, a watch list with alarms and when they hit that price, go buy them, don't be scared, you know, take action and actually buy into the projects. The biggest lesson I learned in the 2018 crash was I had too many coins and I relied on, on too many coins at that time and I didn't scale enough profits from a lot of my old coins back into Bitcoin and ETH and my strategy for, for this bull run that's just passed has been exactly that. I was sitting in Bitcoin and ETH for a long period throughout the bear market. As soon as we kind of changed our trend or the trend turned and we went into a bull market, I started deploying you know, into a lot of old coins with targets in mind and I just stuck to those targets. So if I bought Solana at ten dollars and i said at fifty dollars i want to get out i would get out at fifty dollars regardless of whether it went to two hundred dollars or not and those profits i would just recycle back into bitcoin and ETH because i'm a strong believer that the underlying assets of this space are bitcoin and ETH, and those are the ones that fundamentally have lasted the longest and have the best potential to protect yourself in these bearish times yeah it's great advice. And Ian, uh, what about from what about from you? Find something that you are like cognitively biased, like towards like as in like you just love. It's easy for you to research and read about. It just it get, continues, and you just learn to love it. Uh, and uh, we love these cycles. It, it's a part of the business now. And crypto is twenty four seven. There's just a lot of stuff going on. Just get involved and enjoy. It. So now let's 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 shift the attention from fungible to non-fungible uh, because that seems to be something that really wasn't prominent in last bull run. So this is kind of new for us all. We do see a bit of a correction in terms of not only the price of ETH or Solana, but also the floor prices now have come down a bit from uh, all-time highs for most of the blue chip NFT projects. So do you guys have an NFT strategy and what are you doing right now in regards to NFTs in the current market conditions? Yeah, so I think NFTs are, are your friend in a little bit of a downtrend, um, even though right now today nfts on trading very well i think over the next little while if we sit in a bear market nfts are going to be the way to go find an nft that has utility that can give you passive income where you're getting airdrops or it's an nft that you can use as an in-game asset where you can go use that asset to generate tokens in a good project a strategy that we use is buying nfts that are quality with good founders 
that have a reputation that have been around for a little while go buy the dips don't go by the top of the market and don't spend more money than you can afford because you'll find yourself selling these nfts at the bottom and uh, want to pull your hair out you know identify a project and get on the discord look in the white like look for a whitelist spot and, and spend time trying to obtain that to get into an nft project at an earliest price or stage possible which will give you the biggest chance of that. Yeah, I think I think there's a very important point there. Just don't go buy into hype and FOMO because you're very often going to be people's exit liquidity, unfortunately. So rather go to your homework, go to your research, try to get whitelisted. You know, go look how long their Twitter page has been around. Make sure they don't have 100,000 bots in there. In bear markets, do your homework. You know, like Calvin was saying earlier, find time for yourself, go to gym, go and enjoy time on the beach. But also, instead of spending time crying over you know how bad your portfolio is spend three four hours a day doing homework on projects and uh, another thing to just kind of wrap up i mean there's a lot of good points that we, we covered today but also now's a great time to try things to try new things you know so solana nfts are a much lower barrier to entry whereas most ethereum mints are starting at 0.8 or 0.1 eth you've got a lot of solana nfts which are minting at one soul or two soul or maybe ten soul you know which is significantly lower than an Ethereum mint. So, and that's kind of, again, the trend right now. So even if you've got extra time right now in this market, you know, you can also try to do stuff. If you got the time, it doesn't hurt to try to do your own Solana NFT collection, for example, or whatever the next trend might be. Maybe it's an avalanche, who knows? We've all heard stories of people who create NFT projects and there's, it's really hard to understand what makes one take off versus one doesn't. But we've hear, heard the story now of the kid, you know, 12 year old kid who did the weird whales who made $400,000 on his own project he did himself you know and so i would definitely encourage you guys to try to make revenue in other ways besides trading because it's really hard to trade a market like this right now i just made a video on pocket network pocket network is one of the projects i'm the most bullish on right now and it's trading right now at 16 17 cents private sale investors got in for 15 cents and you can get in right now with no no lock no cliff and uh, get as good of a deal as you can with a project where private sale investors invested over a year ago and it's much less risky today with all the traction that they've had in success between today's low prices and the height of the next bull run 100x potentials in these projects which is life-changing money so anything that you make you know can potentially go up 100x in the next bull run if you invest into the right altcoins which we now know because they're not new to the market which fundamentally strong projects are sitting below, you know, 75 to 98% below their all time highs. And we also believe that most likely in the next bull run, the token price will outperform the old all time highs in very strong fundamental projects. So go try new things, generate revenue how you can outside crypto to invest in rock bottom prices. And everything that these guys have said today are all really good things to, admit, not, to survive the bear market. And I'll leave you on one note as well. Don't beat yourself up about how much you're down because all-time high portfolios are fairy tale they're they're just a figment of your imagination if you try to imagine how much money you had on paper three months ago four months ago compared to what you have today and you think that you did a bad job because you didn't sell the top nobody sold the top and nobody's buying the bottom either guys success is determined in this market not from top to top but trough to trough how much you're, you're, you bottomed out at and then in the next bear market, how much you bottom out, you bottom out at. So hopefully, if you were around in the, in the last bear market, hopefully today your portfolio is worth more than it was in the last bear market. If, that, if that's the case, you're doing really well, guys. Do not beat yourself up for not selling at $69,000 Bitcoin or even $50,000 Bitcoin. Most of us, if we're being real with ourselves, didn't sell at the top and we're definitely not buying the bottom either.